Thanks. Her Royal Highness Putri Astrini has asked me to go to Surakarta in Indonesia to cook a dish called Huzaran Sla. Actually, this is a bit of a surprise. This dish is not at all a traditional Javanese dish. This is of Dutch influence. And it's actually something that as a child I used to have a lot. It's like a salad of all sorts of mixed vegetables. So making the dish is not going to be a challenge, but the challenge is going to be making it into something that a fine dining restaurant like my own would actually serve. So that's going to require a little bit of thinking and a lot of inventiveness. I am Christian Bauer, executive chef and co-owner at Troika Sky Dining, one of Malaysia's most innovative fine dining restaurants. I wanted to have some fun with my European heritage and my love of world cuisine, so I came up with the idea of taking over the kitchens of royal families and reinventing traditional palace dining. My style of cooking is modern, but it always has a definite twist. Who doesn't love a challenge? Join me as I put my culinary skills to the test. I have just landed in Surakarta, better known as Solo, located in central Java. Home to over half a million people, Solo was part of the powerful Mataran Kingdom. Centuries ago, its sultanate ruled much of central Java. Today, Solo is internationally famous for its highly distinctive batik designs, said to be the best in all of Indonesia. Solo's royal family has been a strong patron of batik innovation. Before I meet the royal family, I hit the streets to sample the local delicacies. This I adore, tempeh. It is soya beans, fermented, then fried. Everything I eat today seems to be fried. Tempeh comes in many varieties and it is a staple source of protein on the island of Java. Mm, that is really good. Sweet. Mm, I'm going to have that little bit of sambal. Ah. Mm. I'm getting used to life here in Solo. I mean, there's no shortage of delicious food. My lunch was amazing, it's all very simple, but the herbs, the marinade, fresh, utterly delicious. I did my shopping, I got my shirt, my sarong, and now I think it's time to go back to the hotel, freshen up a little bit, and go to the palace and meet my princess. The royal house of Mankunegaran was established in 1757, right here in the center of Solo. The current head of the family is Kanjeng Gusti Mankunegaran IX, son of the last ruler. The royal family is still in attendance at the palace and works closely with the community to preserve cultural traditions. It is one of the few royal lineages in Indonesia that still retains symbolic significance, even today. I'm about to meet Princess Astrini, sister to Kanjeng Gusti Mankunegaran IX. Welcome, Grace, to the palace. Lovely to meet you. And I know that I prepared for you, and with the heat was mm -hmm. killing you, and then this Ooh, one I thank you. you. Now I've got a royal fan. <laughs> yes, just to have you with the heat. Thank you. <laughs> and this is some, a mass collection That is of quite Indonesia. a lot of them. Yes. Who's the collector? Uh, my grandfather. I will show you more of the mass. Whoa. Yes, yes. Yeah. That really is an extensive is. collection. Princess Astrini is married to a member of the Johor royal family in Malaysia. She was the inspiration for actress Tiara Jacquelina in the Malaysian epic Putri Gunung Ledang. Raised as a court dancer herself, Princess Astrini personally guided Tiara in classical dance and royal customs.
Following their passion, Princess Astrini and her siblings have made part of their palace home to a dance school. The princess's mission is not only to develop new dancers, but more importantly, to preserve the ancient royal dance heritage of Solo. So tell me a little bit about the dish that I'm supposed to cook for you, the Hussar and Sla. When I send you the menu, when you heard about mm -hmm. the menu, how do you feel about it? Can I was very surprised. I was really, I, I thought I would get some, you know, Javanese thing, I am peignet or something oh. like that. But I get food that is very much Dutch influenced, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes, because of a, my grandfather was just studying in Amsterdam before mm. in Holland. They like the food and all that and they bring it here and then they mix it with the taste of Java. Of Java, okay. So it becomes the royal dish. I am thinking of changing the dish quite a bit. Quite a bit? Yes. Okay. The Dutch Huzaren Sla, or Huzaren Salad, is made of boiled potatoes, cooked beef and assorted vegetables dressed with mayonnaise. The salad is named after the Hussars, the Hungarian light cavalry that went behind enemy lines. They always made their meal with pre-cooked food and without fire to avoid being spotted by the enemy. But I've got to ask you again a little bit about the Hussar and Sla okay. that I'm supposed to make. <laughs> what is the significance of this dish for your family? It is, it's just bring back my memories about my father. Mm -hmm. Every time that you have a special guest, that he always serves this as an appetizer. I hope I'll be able to do justice to the dish. I'm sure you will. Quite a room. Yes, this is the main hall. Wow. The Mangunagaran Palace, or Kraton, was established during the period of Dutch colonization in Indonesia, and this is reflected in its unique architecture. The palace is still occupied by the royal family, although it also houses a museum that displays Java's rich cultural heritage. It has been home to 10 generations of the royal family and has changed little since the day it was built. Let's meet my nanny. This is my important person in my life. My mother passed away when I was 14, so she basically raised me. She's like a mother to me. And my kids, Atia and Alma. Hey <laughs> So tell me, are you guys big fans of the Hussar and Sla too? Yeah. Okay, good to do it. <laughs> I think it's time for me to go and inspect what the kitchen looks like. My daughter is just, let's go then and take right. a look. Chris, this is the kitchen that you're going cooking in. It's very European actually. Yes, indeed, I agree with you. We have a natural flue. Are you ready for that charcoal challenge? The charcoal challenge, well, you know, I don't know. I, I'm not really used to cooking with charcoal on this kind of oven, but I, I love the idea. So it's going to be a challenge, but I'm up for it. Good. good. I'm looking so, forward to that. So I'm let's going to practice the whole evening lighting a fire. OK, good. <laughs> My adventure is just beginning. It is past midnight and I head out to town for a late supper. I have come to experience the must-eat local delicacy of chicken's feet. This is good. Stewed, gelatinous. Apparently it's good for my complexion. A lot of collagen, a lot of omega-3 and 6. This is absolutely crazy, but I just can't refuse. Coming up, it's time to get down to business and get the kitchen fired up. I'm Chef Christian Bauer and I'm here in Solo in Central Java at the Mankunegaran Palace where, at the request of Princess Astrini, I'm going to cook a family favorite. And it could go either way. My challenge will be to prepare a modern take of the Husarensla, a potato and meat salad that was the princess's father's favorite. Princess Astrini has arranged for me to meet a relative who knows all about the royal cuisine. 
I hear you're the chef in the family. <laughs> so, what advice can you give me so that I get the dish right? <laughs> yeah, kalau memasak harus dengan hati yang yakin, perasaan yang bagus, dan tidak lupa ada Indonesian taste-nya, jadi manis, asin, dan asam. Maybe I can get you to come and taste the sauce before I send it on. <laughs> The cuisine of Solo is both sweet and savory. From satay to rice pancake, Solo food is infused with coconut milk and spices. My original idea was to completely reinvent the royal recipe, but now I have something different in mind. I don't know whether separating all the ingredients of this, what was basically a salad, is going to work on its own. So I'm going to change my strategy. We're going to do it as a two-part service. We're going to start with a little starter where the salad is more recognizable, and then we'll go on to turn it into a main course. So we'll have beef, we'll have vegetables, we'll have all the ingredients separated out. I think with the new strategy, we're going to get it. I head to the market to find the critical ingredients. For the starter, which will bear more resemblance to the original dish, I need different kinds of vegetables and some fresh herbs. This is the herb I really love. It's like a basil with a touch of verbena, mint and lime, all mixed into one. I don't know whether it's traditionally in our Huzaran Sla, but it doesn't matter. I love it so much, I'm going to put it in this one. Ah, yes. Okay. I've seen carrots over there. The question is whether we can find the baby ones. Ah, yes. For the second course, my own reinterpretation, I also need potatoes, beef and eggs. Whoa, time for the meat. And I think this is what we're going to need. The royal chefs usually buy their meat already smoked, but I'm planning to cure and smoke the beef myself. Excuse me, is this kampong egg? Right, village eggs, just what I need. I'll get two dozen of these and I'm out of here. I have everything I need and so I'm heading back to the palace kitchen. I'm going to start with the appetizer, the traditional salad. So I've got all the ingredients here. We'll start with the beans. So we've got a little bit of green beans, which we have blanched in very salty water. And then very important, green apple. And then carrot. And then we've got a cucumber. Onion, and we're ready to go. And look at what a beautiful color we get out of that. Of course, we're not going to serve it like this. We need dressing. Mayonnaise. There we go. A little tablespoon of whipped cream, just to lighten that and give it some bit of lusciousness. Mm, I think that's perfect. Hi, Chris. Ah, hello. How's the market you? today? The market was great. The market market was great. Amazing. You find everything you need? Yes, I found a lot of things that I didn't need. If I had more time, I would have made another dish entirely with, with spare parts of beef. Oh, it was so exciting. Oh, yummy. It was good. And I'm looking forward for the beautiful dish. Yes. Don't look. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I have to go. I'll see you later. Okay, Thank you very much. For the main course, I'm going to make my own corned beef. And for that, I need to cure the beef and marinate it with herbs and salt. I found this wonderful fragrant herb in the market. The smell is outstanding. And we're going to mix that with a little bit of local dill. The local dill is very different from what you'll find in Europe. I think the two together are going to give us a beautiful marinade for this beef that we're going to roast a little bit later. But all I need to do is just chop this. There's a beautiful fragrance coming out of there already. Take these herbs and add them to the salt. There we go. The salt will draw out some of the moisture of the herbs and actually take that fragrance with it all the way into the meat. 
which should rub it in everywhere. While the beef is being cured, I am preparing a garnish of onion and cucumber salad. The idea is to make this quite sweet, to evoke the Dutch Husarenslaa with its Javanese influence. We're going to take a little bit of this wonderful brown sugar, the local sugar, and yes, don't frown at me, we're going to put sugar on the onions. You know that sharpness of the onion, we want to get that out of there. Now, we need the cucumber. But what we really want is the skin, I want that color. Right. And now we're going to go and do salt on our cucumber. Okay, so these two go to the side. We'll get back to them a little bit later when we actually finish our meat. It is important that I get the royal cuisine just right. Joining Princess Astrini for dinner is her nephew, Prince Pondra, son of Kanjingusti Mankunagaran IX. Let's hope it all goes well. I'm a guest of the royal family of Mankunagaran in Solo, Indonesia. Today is the day. I am cooking for the crown and I will be serving a modern interpretation of the family's classic Huzaren Sla. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Ready cured, we've washed the salt off, now we're ready to smoke our baby. And for that, I've got my smoking mix right here. Local tea this is the same tea that they use in the palace to make that beautiful iced tea that they serve us. And we've mixed it with unpolished rice, so we should get a nice kind of earthy, slightly sweet, smoky flavor into the beef. Let's start with that. I'm using two tiers of the steamer because I want the smoke, but not the heat. So we get far away from the heat. So the beef goes in there. It's going to take a while to smoke this big piece. You can see it's coming up quite nicely. We need the lid on there just to make sure all the steam stays inside. With this size beef, it's going to take me probably about half an hour to get some decent smoke in there. Hopefully, we don't have too much heat so we don't cook the beef too much. Because afterwards, we'll trim it up and we should have all the flavor in there and still a raw piece of beef. Now this is beautifully smoked, We've got a light smoky flavor in there. The original Huzaran Sla recipe calls for cured and smoked beef, but that would by then be completely cooked. So our modern interpretation, we've got the smokiness, but it's still raw. So now we can trim it the way we want it and still get the correct doneness. Right, it goes on here. You know, it's really interesting. I'm here in Solo, in the palace kitchen, in the middle of central Java, and I'm making what is basically a European dish with a Javanese influence. That's a beautiful piece of meat. Now, the way we've cut it, we're gonna get six really nice pavés, which is like a paving stone. So it's almost a square piece of meat because we don't want it to be too big on the plate and not look elegant. It is, after all, royal cuisine. The royal family has arrived. This is the point of no return. Will Princess Astrini approve of my interpretation and give my version of her late father's beloved Husaren Sla her royal blessing? Let's take our ring off. So this is everything the Husaren Sla is, but because we're doing it as a little light starter, we have not added any meat to it. First up, though, is the more traditional version of the salad. Very sweet 
case. Time to plate up the deconstructed main course with smoked beef and roast vegetable. Beautiful, very, very elegant. For me, this is always the most nerve-wracking moment. The last plate just went out. The food looked good, but it's really all about the taste for me. It's still crunchy. Mm. Mm. The sauce. <laughs> I use that bit fruit here. Mm -hmm. So, did you like it? Oh, yes. And Chef, thank you for the Husaran's love. Remind me of my father, oh. my late father. Thank you. Yes, and thank you for bringing us that memories again mm -hmm. and in my childhood. We have to give you a clap. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What an incredible experience. I feel like I've really been immersed in the culture of Solo. I mean, it's still very much a living thing here. And what a privilege to have met a royal family who work hard to maintain tradition in the face of daily modern influence. And I'm really pleased they like my food.